Hello friends, I'm going to do something today we haven't done in a while. We're going to do a Q&A, believe it or not. I don't know what number this is. I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to go back and look through all my videos, 161 videos, and see what number the last Q&A was. And by the way, I'd like to say that we're quickly approaching 5,000 subscribers here. We are, I'm averaging about 200 and something new subscribers every 28 days. And I have only you to thank for that. I really appreciate it. I got an email from a gentleman named Peter. I'm not going to give you his last name, just out of respect for him. And when I come back, I'm going to answer some questions that he had for me. Okay? I'll be right back. Hey! Hello there. So here we go, another Q&A. It's a, a friend sent me, a subscriber sent me some questions that he asked, and these are, uh, I wouldn't say they're necessarily unique questions, but they're good questions that, you know, we haven't talked about in a while, and I think it's a good idea to go through them. The first question that Peter asked, is it possible to rent a P.O. box at the local post office in Monta? So, Peter, let me explain something. We don't have a post office here. We don't have... A postal system in Ecuador at all. You don't get mail. One of the activities that you get to look forward to after retirement and living here is that you don't have to make that trip to the mailbox anymore. No more. Your address is going to be that corner house down at the end of the street with a lot across the street from it that has a black and white Jersey cow grazing on the grass. That'll be your address or it'd be like the tall building on such and such street down to end. <laughs> so, you know, there is no postal system here. You're going to, you, you can say DHL, FedEx, Amazon, AP shipping, my US shipping, any of those companies. I guess they can be your post office, but there is no postal system here. It hasn't been in years and years and years. What's the sales tax in Ecuador? I believe the same rate applies to the entire country, unlike here in the U.S. where each country determines their sales tax. Also, price tax includes sales tax, right? Mm, I don't know about the price tags, but I'll show you an example. Here's a receipt that I got this morning. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll scan it and put it right here, okay? And it shows here that the they call it IBA. It's 12%. So when you get to, when you come here, you get to pay 12% sales tax on non-food items. And for anything that you have shipped into the country, you get to pay 12.5% import tax on it. So I'm sure that makes you really excited and happy. Seems like a lot. But if you're, I'll tell you another thing too. If you're over 65, you can go to this place. Here's, I put a picture right here. This place called SRI, that is the equivalent to, Ecuador's equivalent to the United States uh, IRS. You can go here and give them your cedula number and you'll get a refund for, I don't know how much, but a lot of your sales tax you paid over the last 12 months. So that's something to know about, okay? Cash is used to pay your landlord, but is there a similar app like Venmo or Zelle? I know Peru has something called Yapi, which is the equivalent of Venmo. If they have it in Peru, I'm sure there's an app in Ecuador. All right, so let's get this straight. We're not in Peru. Don't compare Peru. I know a lot of your stuff here, you, you referenced Peru. I think you were born there or you lived there. Or, I don't know. Let's just get this on the table right now. We're, we're not Peru. So don't, don't think that because they have it in Peru that we got it in Ecuador. It's just not going to work that way. You know, you pay your landlord here the way they tell you to pay them. You pay them either cash or you give them a check. I doubt that that will work. I, I pay my landlord through Zelle, through Charles Schwab, because I have a pre-arranged or pre -arranged, you know, arrangement with my landlord. But most likely when you come here, you may not even meet your landlord and you're going to have to give cash to the property manager or whoever's managing the property. It's different for everybody. There is no standard 
for how you pay landlords here. I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, but it's, you know, when I was down the apartment below the one I'm in right now, I had to go to the mall three or four days in advance. I paid $700 a month rent. I had to go and get 400 bucks out of the ATM machine and then wait another day and get another $400 or I mean $300 to get my $700 worth of rent. Excuse me just a minute while I mute this. People dinging me while I'm doing the video. <laughs> um, so and then I had to bring cash to the building and then got a receipt and that's how I paid it. I paid a building manager here and that's how I paid my rent. Here, now, like I said, I paid, but I prepaid my rent. I pay my rent six months at a time, and I get a little little bit of a break. And But I was fortunate enough that I got to meet my landlord. My landlord lives in Florida, and I got to meet her when she was here, and I nabbed her. I, I, I worked out a deal with her, and I said, I'll pay you six months, and I paid her with... Uh, Zell. And even at that, Swab wouldn't let me pay the full amount at one time. I had to pay it in two payments, one one day and another the next day. So, no, not everybody has to pay cash, but a lot of people do. Just don't forget, it's all about negotiating here, okay? The next question, do they have senior citizen-only lines at the bank or grocery stores? Again, they have that in Peru. Well, I'm not going to talk about Peru, okay? Uh, yes and no. They have them. Do they honor them? It depends on who was sitting, standing behind the register. You get some young girl back there behind the register that doesn't give a hoot in the hell about whether you're a senior citizen or not. And but I've seen some clerks tell people in front of me that they had to step to another line because I was in line. I've had guards at the bank while I'm standing waiting for an ATM machine or waiting to go inside and get some change from a teller. I've seen guards, guards have come out and got me and taken me to the front of the line. Uh, just so you know, you don't have to take that. You don't have to go to the front of the line. You're retired. I mean, what, what have you got to do? You got nothing but time in your hand. I don't feel like I deserve to get in front of the line. I take it when I can, but I certainly don't expect it. And, but yeah, I mean, they're there. Peter, and they're, they, they're, they're at the banks, they're in a lot of places that you go to, a lot of the government buildings that you go to, like when I went to get my schedule, I got to go to the front of the line. I passed about 300 people. Now, I took that one because I was in Wyakill, and I wanted to get there and get back. Can you open a bank account using your temporary schedule? What's a temporary schedule? Did we, is this something new? I mean, do we have, did I, did I wake up in a different country today? We don't have temporary schedules here. Maybe you're thinking about your passport. Folks, when you come to Ecuador, you're here on your passport. Unless you prearrange all your visa stuff ahead of time. When you come here, you come here, they stamp your passport, you got 90 days to visit and get the hell out, or you can extend for another 90 days and stay here for 180 days, okay, while you're working to get your visa. Once you get your visa, and only after you get your visa, you get a cedula, and the cedula is like your country ID. That's your tie to everything. Everything you do, when you pay for your insurance, you use your cedula number. I pay for my internet, I use my cedula. My, you know, login for a lot of places is my cedula. A lot of the grocery stores and a lot of the vendors, a lot of places you go, they'll ask you for your cedula, and they'll register you, and that's how they get your sales tax registered to SRI, and so you can go and get your refund if you're over 65. So there's no temporary cedula. You can open a bank account at JEP Cooperative, a co-op, okay, a credit union, if you have your passport. But the other places, the big banks, they want you cedula. Do you see many Venezuelan migrants in Monto? Yeah, we see a lot of them. Most, if you see a beggar, you're probably seeing a Venezuelan migrant. I'm asking because the new president was sworn in today in Colombia, and they are followers of Castro and Chavez's failed regimes, radical leftist former M-19 terrorists, so expect a huge influx of Colombian, I guess Colombians fleeing their country in the coming year as their country starts collapse, 
collapsing. Sorry, I don't think that's good news, but it's likely to happen. IMO, in my opinion. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. I didn't. I, you know, I, I, I just love these people that make statements like this. And oh, the country's going to start collapsing. What is it that you know that they don't know? I read the news about the new president being sworn in. I didn't see anything about any news about Colombia collapsing. I got some friends in Cuenca that you can probably go meet, and they, they think the world's coming to an end, and we're going to be paying taxes in China before too long. We're all going to be speaking Russian, and there won't be any economy. I got legitimate friends that that's what they believe any day now. So yeah, we see lots of men's away to migrants. They've been coming up here for a long time to answer your question. This last question, also, have you experienced any power or water outages? Or both? Are you kidding? This is Ecuador. It's a third world country. We have water outages and power outages all the time. Mostly the water outages that I've experienced have been water outages here in my building where they shut the water off to do maintenance. It doesn't happen a lot. Power goes off. More so, well, actually, you know what? Well, yeah, I would say more so than it did in Arizona. We lost our power in, in the Arizona at least once a year, and it was always in the dead heat of the summer. We've lost power since I've been here maybe three or four times. One time it was off for a couple hours, but usually it's off for just a very short period of time. But if you're in a building like I'm in, the we have generator comes on, it keeps the refrigerator going, and also keeps my coffee pot going, Keeps the lights on in the foyer and keeps the elevators going. That's what our generator does. So yeah, it does happen, you know. But I don't. It's really it's not a problem. It's really not a problem. Over there in Monta, I guess the high-rise buildings have a big water tank. No, I don't think so. We have a water system here. There are there are some buildings around here that you see these water tanks on, but I, don't, I think they're empty. I don't think they're using that system very much anymore. Maybe in some of the older buildings, but. Not in the newer ones. These kind of situations may seem unfathomable for someone living in the U.S., but I know very well how things work and don't work in South America. That's why I asked. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate your questions, and I hope I answered them fairly, and, and I hope I'm accurate. Anybody, if you have any questions, you have questions that you want me to answer, just send me an email. My email is in the description on almost all my emails. I noticed lately that I've gotten a few questions in the comment sections from people wanting to know, you know, can I have your email address so I can send you direct you know, questions? And I tell everybody, my email address is in the description, you know. Another thing, too, I have 161 videos now, and I've, I've got a lot of videos that's covered a lot of topics. I don't have an index of all the videos, so maybe I can, if I can figure out a way to do it, I'll put an index to all my videos and where they're located and what date they're on. And that way, if you want to know, a, a, if you have a specific question about a topic that maybe you're not sure if I've covered or not, you can look in the index and look up the video. As much as I like to help everybody, and I help a lot of people, I, I sometimes, I just don't have time to, you know, to go over and rehash an issue and explain how things are done when it's already in a video. And so please, you know, forgive me if, if I don't answer your question and I kind of say, go look up the video, <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm really trying to be as nice about it as I can. But anyway, thanks so much for subscribing to my channel and thanks so much for watching my videos, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the thumbs up and thanks for the thumbs down too because I get paid for those too. So, from Monte Ecuador, it's been a great pleasure. Ciao, ciao. See you in the next one. So I was talking to a friend of mine about how stressed I am and dealing with some stuff around here and my life here. And she suggested I try uh, 
this method of trying to help me cool down. So he gave me this thing here and told me to you light it and take a couple of hits on it and see what happens. So here it goes. I don't think I did a very good job of lighting it. 